Welcome to day six, everybody. As I've coached couples and individuals, and from my own experience, I've noticed a few common mistakes people make that undermine our ability to get the most out of sex. I want to share with you a few of these mistakes and how to avoid them so you can enjoy great sex and deeper intimacy. The first mistake a lot of couples make is that they, be, they are too outcome oriented. By this, I mean you're having sex to have a specific goal or a finish line. Kind of like a football team driving down the field towards a touchdown. A common symptom of this is placing too much emphasis on her orgasm, for instance, for the reason why they engage sexually. I, say this, I see the same principle play out watching my son play tennis. He's a pretty good tennis player, but he gets far too outcome oriented. He gets preoccupied about winning or losing the match and how his ranking is going to be affected. During the middle of the game, that fear and anxiety creep in, causing him to freeze and goof up in the middle of his tennis game. When he messes up, he fears losing, which fuels his preoccupation about his need to win the match, causing him to lose focus on the game at hand, and so on, the cycle continues. So you can see how sometimes when couples get a little preoccupied sexually, they're preoccupied about the certain outcome. Am I doing this the right way? Is she going to get there? Am I going to stay hard enough? Or whatever the fear might be. We, when you focus too much on the outcome, you kind of miss the beauty and the wonder and the amazement of arousal that, that, that usually unfolds naturally and as it builds. You're too busy thinking about the destination that you miss out on the scenery along the way. And great sex is far more about the scenery than the destination. The second myth or mistake is they think every encounter should be amazing. Couples get in trouble with unrealistic expectations. In movies, books, Instagram, and definitely in porn, you may be led to believe that every sexual encounter should be earth-shatteringly amazing. But that's not reality. The reality is that sex is messy and can be awkward at times. Sometimes you may get a knee in the face while trying to switch positions. Sometimes he's just not going to be able to get his, get his uh, game on or get his member up in the game. And sex is really messy. And you're sharing body fluids and everything else too. So my unscientific guess is that 5% of all encounters are going to be earth shattering. And about 5 to 15% on the other hand of encounters are just going to be duds. And there's just going to be a lot of in-between that's just good enough sex. And yes, my friends, good enough is definitely good enough, and that's just fine. The third mistake I see the couples make is the thinking that sex is pleasurable for him and it's a duty for her. If you think back to your earliest sexual education classes, chances are that it was more about reproductive biology than it was about sex. Sex was taught, if it's taught from like a biological reproductive standpoint, sex is going to be very male-centric because the dialogue is going to say he puts his penis in her vagina and with a bit of thrusting and friction he ejaculates in connection to orgasm and that, my friends, is how babies are made. That's probably what you'll hear. But what's wrong with that is that the story leaves out a lot of her pleasure. That story also leaves out that women have just as much, if not more, sexual capacity than men do. Without believing that sex is great for her too, she may believe that all she's good for is a receptacle for his pleasure and that she has a duty to perform to keep her husband happy. If women and men realize that sex is there to really bless both people and can be super pleasurable for both husband and wife, and not just for the man, a lot of the misunderstandings can be resolved. In fact, um, you'll find greater depth of pleasure and sex will be something you look forward to for both of you, knowing that you're both going to have a great time from it. The fourth mistake couples make is misunderstanding different desire levels. A few years into my marriage, I mistakenly thought something was got to be wrong with my wife because she didn't walk around the house exuding the same desire for sex as I did. Actually, nothing was wrong with her at all. It was just that we had different levels of desire, just like every other couple on the planet. You will always, in any relationship, have a higher desire spouse and a lower desire spouse, and that's not a problem. In fact, that same principle of higher desire and lower desire applies to more than just sex. In any relationship, you'll have a higher desire spouse and a lower desire spouse for things like cleanliness, spending versus savings, the way you parent, 
dealing with in-laws and so on. Just accepting that I had the higher desire in our relationship felt liberating. The fifth mistake that couples make is thinking that pleasurable sex should be easy and not require any effort at all. Ha! If only anything of value in life was easy and effortless, such as building a business, exercising faith in God, taking care of our health, running a marathon, or scaling Mount Everest, everything of value requires effort. And really good sex takes a lot of effort and discipline and time and patience and skill and a copious dose of empathy. But I can assure you that it's well worth the effort. Mistake number seven is that orgasm should come naturally for her. Frankly, men tend to have an upper hand when it comes to learning how to orgasm. They go through development, touching their penis many times a day, such as when using the bathroom. It's natural for men to know what kind of touch feels good. Many women in general don't take the time to explore and touch themselves in a similar, similar way, so learning how to orgasm isn't a natural response for her. The fact is, orgasming is a learned skill and something you get proficient doing. Some women pick up on it quickly, while others take more effort, patience, and practice for others. The last mistake that couples make is misunderstanding anatomy and physiology. Oh, how I wish I knew earlier in our marriage that the sexual center for pleasure for women was the clitoris, not the vagina. We could have enjoyed years of more pleasurable sex by having a better understanding of how pleasurable sex works. I heard of a couple that was in a sex therapist's office. They were there because she wasn't experiencing orgasm and they're trying to get her some help. After asking a number of questions, it finally dawned on the sex therapist that their sexual encounters were lasting about five minutes long. The therapist explained to the couple that on average, it takes a woman at least 20 minutes of stimulation before she experiences an orgasm. And often it takes longer than that if she's still learning how. This was a revelation to the couple and with a few adjustments went to the way they made love, they were able to both enjoy more pleasurable sex. There are other things about our sexual anatomy and sexual response that if we understood better, would just make sex better. The Intimately Us app has an in-depth anatomy section that would be a good start for learning the basics. And try out some things and do your own exploring at home. So, can you relate to any of these mistakes? What other misconceptions or myths have you experienced? Direct message us or leave a comment below. We love hearing from you.